This video is part of the AnglerJS Custom Directives course that teaches you about a lot of things related to building your own custom directives, such as DDOs, the link function, the compile service, interpolation, transclusion, and much more. You can get information about the course at tinyurl.com slash AnglerJS Directives, and let's jump right into the video. Let's talk about shared and isolate scope and the differences between the two and how they play into custom directives. So let's take a real high level look first at what we call shared scope. Now shared scope is built into AngularJS and you can almost think of it like this bunk bed approach. On the top, you can have a parent scope and then on the bottom you might have a child scope. So it's kind of nested and if you think about it, if you ever maybe grew up with one of these, if uh, your brother or sister up above happened to do a little uh, you know, slobber in the sleep or something like that, you truly could share in it if you're on the bottom. It just kind of inherits down. Now that's really what happens when you nest controllers in AngularJS is if you have a scope in the parent controller, then by default, the child controller can get to that scope. And we call that shared scope or inherited scope. Now you're gonna see in just a moment, you can do this with AngularJS directives but it's really only useful when a directive is only gonna be used in a given app. If you want it to be reusable, you really can't count on the fact that there's gonna be something, some type of property maybe, up in this parent scope because you don't know what's gonna be there if it's reusable. And that'll get us into the next one, which is called isolate scope. Now isolate scope, you're sleeping alone. You're totally on your own, there's no one around, and you're completely isolated from everything else. Now in this world, you have all of your own data and you can get to it, but nobody else can get to it, but they can pass you things. And so we can communicate using events, for instance, we can pass functions around, you'll see that coming up. And if you have a property up in the parent scope and you wanna get it into my directive that has isolate scope, then there is a way to do that. And so we'll be going through that as we discuss the isolate scope or what we call local scope properties. Now, another way to think of this isolate scope concept is we have the parent scope here, but the child scope or isolate scope, we're gonna call it in this case, kind of lives in a different area and it's kind of blocked by a wall. And we're gonna assume that you can't climb over this wall. So we now have this problem though of how do we get data from the parent scope over? And when it comes to going backwards, how do we get data out of the child scope back over to the parent scope if there's this wall in the way? Well, that's what's gonna get into these isolate scope properties. You're gonna see in a moment, you can kind of think of this as we're gonna punch holes in the wall. Put a little, uh, I don't know, a cubby hole, I guess you could say, or a little pipe that goes through the wall. And we could still pass messages that way. We can't maybe throw it over and we can't climb over but we can maybe pass a, a little box or a ball or something like that through these pipes and over into the child scope or the isolate scope. Now here's kind of how it works from a really high level code standpoint. So the shared scope you see here might have a controller and that controller might have a customer's property. In this case, it's a, an array we'll assume. Now, this will work whether you use a dollar scope or you use the controller as and do this dot type of approach for customers. But down in the directive, we might also want to get to scope.customers. Well, by default, that just inherits down. And we can share that. You don't even have to do anything special to get to it. You could just access it directly. Because in this case, by using a shared scope, the directive, as it says here, is depending on this parent scope. Now, hopefully you can see that that limits the reuse of your directive. If you don't have this customer scope property, then obviously if you're gonna write out the customers, maybe you're gonna iterate through those inside of the directive and write out a list or something like that. Well, if you can't count on the customers, the directive's kind of useless. So oftentimes this might be useful in place of like an ng include, and we'll actually talk about that coming up here when I do a demonstration. But for a lot of directives, this doesn't work so well because you just don't know what's gonna be passed. Now the alternative would be this isolate scope. So in this case, the controller still has this customer's property, but because we did isolate scope, that's not gonna be shared down. It's like there's a wall that blocks it. 
So we're not gonna be able to get to scope.customers. Now we can create our own properties down here in the directive, such as this isolated equals true property, and that's just a custom one I just made up. But the scope is completely isolated from the parent scope. You're literally behind the, the big old wall and there's no way to throw something over or climb over. So we're gonna have to come up with another approach. So before we go any further, let's take a quick look at some code and see what shared scope might look like. All right, so you can see that we have a controller here and it has a customer, so just a single one in this case. And we have a name and a street property. Pretty standard stuff here. The scopes get injected in. Uh, if you don't like that, you could use controller as, you know, all that's fair game here. Well, down in our directive, which we're gonna call shared scope, we can now write a template that depends on this customer property because this is gonna be inherited down. And so we can get to customer.name and customer.street. And if you've used the ng-include directive from Angular, it's a way to kind of suck in little baby views, I like to call them. And they can even have their own controllers. But we can just get to, by default, this inherited scope. And this is the shared scope concept. All right, so this might be what it looks like, and this would, of course, just write out name and street once it renders. Now, when it comes to isolating scope, it's a really simple technique, and this is gonna be one of the properties we discussed in a previous module. In this particular directive, we're gonna have an isolate scope directive name, and you can see we have a template that has a customer name and a customer street binding in it, a data binding expression. Well, to isolate the scope, we need to build the wall. And so what we do is we use the scope property in this DDO, Directive Definition Object, as a quick review. And then this, to me, represents each side of the wall. And so every time I see this, I think, okay, we're building a wall and we can't throw something over the wall. We can't you know, bore a hole through the wall per se, um, but we can build some machinery into this wall to make it so that the parent scope can still communicate down into the directive and vice versa. And that's what we'll be talking about really throughout the rest of this module. Now, there's a problem with this demonstration though. The isolate scope, when we go to use this directive here, no data is gonna display because we're trying to get to some customer property which has a name sub property and a street and there is no customer property. We shut that off when we did this. We build up the wall and we can no longer get to that. So in this particular case, that's not gonna work. So what do you do then? How does data get through when you have this parent scope that has, for instance, the customer property, and you have this directive isolate scope over here, what are we gonna to do to get data over this wall? Well, that's actually gonna be the subject of the rest of the module. We're gonna talk about these local scope properties, and I like to think of them as building a wall, but kind of building some pipes into the walls so that our parent scope and still pass data over into the directive scope. So what I'm gonna do first is show you a live demo of the shared scope. And then once we do that, we're gonna jump right over into these local scope properties. Let's take a look at the difference between shared scope and isolate scope in directives. So you can see in this page here, I have a reference to a directive called shared scope and another one called isolate scope, which have the rather obvious purposes. And I referenced Angular and one other little script here that's important called Directives Controller. Now this is just a really simple controller that has a few properties in it. You'll notice that uh, we have this customer here, we have a customers and some other things, but for now we're mostly concerned about the customer. That's what we're gonna be working with in this particular demonstration. So let me go into the shared scope directive and this is very, very similar to what we saw in the first module in the course uh, where we did a hello world. This just happens to have a few data binding expressions embedded, as you can see here for name and for street. And so what'll happen is because we haven't isolated the scope, it'll just inherit that down from our controller and just write those out. So if we go back to the page here, we're just gonna reference the controller in this simple demo, and that'll get us access to those properties. Now from here, the isolate scope one, if we go into that, you'll notice it's pretty much the same and I'm gonna leave it that way initially. And so let's go ahead and run the index here, HTML. 
And when this loads, you should see the data written out for both. And you'll notice that it does work. Uh, even the isolate scope works. And that's because right now it's, again, not isolate scope at this point. So let's sw switch on back here and go to our isolate scope. And let's build up the walls. Let's make it truly isolated. So we're going to say scope. And then we're going to give it the kind of squiggly brackets here. And again, I like to think of that as kind of the left side of the wall and the right side of the wall. And then we can build in those some pipelines you'll see later to allow the outside world to pass in data. But for now, we're just going to totally cut ourselves off from the outside scope. So let's go ahead and save that. And let's switch back over here. And you'll see it's already been updated, but when I refresh, nothing displays. And that is correct behavior because we've isolated ourselves. So that would be an example of the difference between shared and isolate scope. So the next thing to learn is, okay, how do we poke those holes in the wall so that we can get data in from the outside world? And we'll be talking about that in the next part of the module.